All right, so how do you verify the results of Subliner with Smart? That's what I'm gonna look at today. I wanna to go through it as quickly as possible so I can get you up and running if you also wanna do some experiments with Subliner. And then in a future video, I'll talk about why it works and maybe get into a little bit more of the physics and, and diving deeper into the graphs. But today, I just wanna talk about how to verify that it's working. So. I have a uh, little sound system over here, a main and a sub, and I have them on the ground, and I'm gonna do ground plane measurements. Why? Because I'm in my basement, it's small, there's lots of boundary, there's lots of reflections, um, and I tried to do the same thing yesterday with the speakers up in the air and the microphone at ear height, and this is what it looks like. And that's fine. And it's, it's totally a good test to do, and it's a good thing to test with Subaligner, and it's, it's good to practice this way with Smart, but it's much better to listen to the results. For example, here is one result uh, of a main subalignment. Here is another one. They look slightly different down here, but it's hard to know exactly what this will sound like. Maybe a little bit more low end, it's much more interesting to listen to this result, but that doesn't really make for a very good video here where I'm just sort of showing you graphs. So let's look at ground plane measurements today and that'll make it a little bit easier to validate or maybe invalidate the results that we get from Subaligner. Okay, so um, let's take our first measurements. Okay, so these measurements are not super easy to read, but it's definitely easier to read than the stuff I was looking at yesterday. So it should be pretty clear that these are not in alignment down here in the low end. Um, and if you're wondering what's going on up here in the high end, it's because I, I didn't really take care to actually aim the speakers at the microphone. I just did like a rough estimation because all I really care about right now is looking at this stuff down here. These are my solo elements, and here's my combined system, main plus sub. And we can see that we are not getting summation. Even without knowing you know, exactly how much, I know I should be getting at least some summation in this area where we have overlap, right? And not only am I not, am I not getting any, but I'm getting some kind of cancellation here, right? So let's look at what Subliner suggests and see what kind of results that will get us. So over here in Summoliner, all I have to do is put in my information about my main speaker, its distance, and my sub speaker and its distance. And I'm just putting in uh, matching numbers for all this stuff because the microphone is equidistant from both elements. So Subaligner suggests that I delay the main by 1.8 milliseconds and invert the polarity. So let's try that. So right away, I can see that this looks a little bit better. If I kind of rotate the graph around here, I can see where these traces lay right on top of each other. So, so far, this is looking good. Let's look at the combined system. And now I see that I'm actually getting summation in this area where we have matching level instead of what we had before. So let's compare. Here is the original without doing anything. And here is the first suggestion from Subaligner. So, so far it seems like it's working. There are other things we can test though. Subaligner not only makes some suggestions just based on delay and polarity, which I assume everybody has access to somewhere in their signal chain, but if you have some access to inserting other filters like all pass filters or you know different flavors of crossover filter, you might wanna look at this section. Now this is called experimental because I'm still testing this stuff out and I hope that you will too. Um, but here we have three different options. You might wanna try these for two main reasons. Number one, it might actually be better. So this says that this will be a 92% improvement over this solution with just delay and polarity and um, we'll have less delay. So earlier we had to put in you know, 1.8 milliseconds of delay and that's not much, but now we can just use zero. So let's try this solution. So all I need to do is zero out the delay and I'll put in this all pass filter that it's suggesting. Okay, so here is a solution su suggested by Subliner with an all pass filter at 53 Hertz. And uh, we can see that it's pretty good alignment here. I didn't even need to measure the sub again because it's exactly the same. 
as my original sub native ground measurement. Um, but what we can do is look at combined systems and we can compare them to our previous solution. So here in green is the solution with just delay and polarity. And what we see is that they're almost exactly the same. There's a tiny bit less summation here at 48.3 Hertz. Um, so what I'm learning is that what's cool about this is that if I wanted a solution with no delay or less delay, this might be a way to do that. Um, let's test one more of these solutions. So there's another one here. It uses another all-pass filter, but just at a different location. So let's try it. All right, so here's our third test. I'll rotate this graph around a little bit more. I'm just looking around this area, seeing, uh, you know, this looks like it has pretty good alignment. Let's compare combined systems. So here's the most recent test with the all-pass filter at a new location, up at 160 hertz. Here's the previous one. Um, almost exactly the same. So previous one has a little bit, tiny bit better summation here and here. We're getting, you know, we're being really picky. And here's the solution with just delay. So that's how you could potentially verify some of the results with Subaligner. I hope that you'll test it out and let me know if you find out that they are true or false. And of course, this isn't the only way you can do it. Um, just doing measurements and seeing if they line up in smart and you get good results is one way to do it um, but you can you should also do listening tests so built into subaligner is another page um, it's called listen and if you hit play and you play this test tone through your sound system then you can take the results in and out and that's actually what i did yesterday when i had the sound system set up um, i created three presets with these three different results in them because they look so similar it's really hard to tell, right? And they might all sound the same. Um, but it turns out they, did, they didn't in this case. And so when I had my wife come down and just randomly switch between them, I discovered that my favorite one is this one, this particular solution. So just another important part of the testing process. Oh, and one more thing I forgot to tell you. One more thing to test is that back on this page, if you click on export, you can download all of these traces in either their anechoic or near anechoic formats, very clean. So what that will allow you to do is, let me hide everything here, and let me open up the very first thing that I measured. So, so here's that first measurement that I made. If I'd never measured the speaker before, I might not know what it's supposed to look like. So here is the thing that I downloaded from Subaligner. And as you can see, it's much less squiggly because um, I took care to try to remove as much as the ripple as possible when I did this original measurement. And these don't match because, as I mentioned, the, I'm not taking care with the aim. But down here, we can see that these really match. So in those situations where we have noisy measurements or lots of reflections, it is really helpful to have something to compare it to. That's how you can validate or maybe invalidate the results from Subaligner on your own. I hope you'll test it out and let me know what you discover. Thanks.